Hello, bowling fans from Europe and USA and from across the world. Welcome to our new podcast, Across the Pond, with Sasha and Tiger and Will and Janis. <laughs> Janis, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Welcome. Tonight, we're going to tell you all about tractor pulling in Europe in our first episode because our season is starting soon and we're yeah. going to do that right after the intro. Hello there. So this is our first episode across the pond podcast for pulling friends from around the world. Simply because we thought this is a worldwide sport and nobody's taking care of worldwide coverage. And um, we got guests here. We got Tiger. We got Will from America. We got Janice and me. We are usually floating Finnish. Yeah. The German podcast. And yeah, tonight we uh, prepared a little bit of information about how tractor pulling looks in Europe because our season is starting soon. Yeah, end of April. End of April, we have our first big Euro Cup event, first big pull for Germany. The big German Championship, start of the German Championships, and right. the big start of the Euro Cup in the heavy mod, light modified, and superstar class. So, yeah, so this is the reason why we're talking about Europe today, and the next episode will be about America. Yeah. So, we collected questions from pullers in the States to answer today, and. Yeah, the first thing, because I've been to the States before. Uh, yeah, about every 21 years, right? Yeah, no, I've been to the States a little bit often. But yeah. there was one question I got asked last time I was there that I found extremely funny. And that was, how is pulling in Europe? Must be nice if you only have to drive three hours to every event. <laughs> <laughs> funny. <laughs> funny. So I went online and I created this. What you see here is America. And I put Europe our circuit on top of it. And everything where it's yellow is basically where we pull. I might have forgotten some guys up here, some up there and some wherever, but this is the main area we pull. And if you consider this, so you could say we pull from the north of Florida to somewhere up in Canada. So if you run the Euro Cup, you will have pulls from here, here, there, there, there. We travel a lot. And you and you have to go with boats. Yes, Sweden, every, everything here in between is water, water, water. So we <laughs> have a lot of ferry time in between, also, which takes a lot of time because it's ferry is a lot slower than than a than a truck. The three hour thing is uh, main mainly something for the Netherlands. The yeah, Dutch guys. The, the guys here. The, 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 that's where the main stuff is happening. The, if you are in that area, you're lucky. So that out of the way, um, we had some questions. So we pull basically since the late 70s and the first rule book here was taken over in 1978, 79 and it was basically a copy of the NTPA rule book, just turned metric instead of imperial and that was the classes we started with. Uh, today it looks a little bit different because we run anything from garden tractors to hot farms, super stock, pro stock modifieds. So, but the people ask, what are the exact classes? So I start very small, very quickly. Our smallest class is stock third. garden tractors at 500 yeah. kilos, which is like yeah. 1100 pounds. Then we got modified garden tractors also at 1100 points, uh, 1.3 liter engines, naturally aspirated, usually motorcycle. Then we do 600 kilo, which is like 1300 pounds. They are still considered garden pullers, run the same sled. They are limited to three liter turbocharged, uh, five liter naturally aspirated, five liter naturally aspirated, and they use like you can see here BMWs, also yep. American V8s, small ones, three yeah, or five. Small, so. some 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 small blocks. We have uh, um, BMW V12 engine in yep. this, uh, two motorcycle engines. Yeah, so that's the little stuff. Then we still have, or already have the. Or, no, we do have the. Not still have. Okay. We have them for quite a while. What they call the compact diesels. They're also mm -hmm. at thirteen hundred pounds. Usually have a two liter or two and a half liter four cylinder car engine in there. Um, can be diesel and, and methanol. Yeah. Single charger. Basically, a little pro stock with car engines component. So then we go up a level higher. This is where we start with big tractors. Uh, farm pulling category. Uh, the lowest farm pulling category under the ETPC rule book is what we call a hobby sport. These are tractors that are limited to 2700 RPM. 
and they have an air restrictor depending on the weight class, which is pretty pretty small. Yeah, they're doing about 300, 350 horsepower. And then with different with weight different weight, weight classes weight. from yeah. let's say I, don't, I think three and a half tons, seven thousand pounds to yeah. uh, eleven thousand, twelve thousand pounds. So that's the stuff that you run at the local uh, events. So then we have what we call the level two. So these guys, they're also on an RPM limit, um, but and also have an air restrictor. But this is two point sixty six inches. Um, they do close to a thousand. May not be component. Everything has to be OEM. OEM head may run intercoolers, and there are, as I said, around a thousand horsepower and run mainly in uh, seventy seven hundred and ninety nine hundred pounds. One class higher is what we call super sport. That's these guys, and they are pretty serious. This yeah. is, uh, still RPM limited, but everything else is free. And they are talking, depending on the engine size, up to 2,400 horsepower at the moment. So this is would yeah. be comparable to Super Farm. They run 3,200 RPM, but with much bigger turbochargers. And but also two way levels. Um, yeah, 7,700 7, and 9,900. Yeah. Yep. So, of course, after that, and they can be component it's basically a step in, into pro stock just with an RPM limited engine. Then we do, of, of course, have pro stocks. Uh, different to the America, we run 7,700 pounds, uh, 510 cubic inch limit, and still OEM heads, as far as I remember. They're talking, mm. discussing this, uh, but so far it's all OEM stuff. Then, of course, super stocks, which are basically pretty much the same as in the US. Uh, Except for engine size, I think is ten point six liters. I don't know. Nobody understands liters in the states, yet. So you have to talk inches and cubic. You're the man with the yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think the six cylinder stuff is all the same. All right, so uh, modified. So that's where we have a little bit of a difference. We got the fifty five hundred light modified. Yeah, uh, which is a Euro Cup class. Um, they do have a limit in there. But it's so high that it's actually not really effective. <laughs> yeah, so the 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 main engine combination yeah, basically are twin Hemi, twin Hemi, three Chevy, three Chevy, twin Allison. We have twin Allisons in there. Yeah. Some truck truck engines with uh, uh, with uh, far, uh, three three turbochargers on it. Yeah. Uh, tank engines and some like. That. Okay. Then we have what we this call the modifieds. That's a seventy seven hundred pounds. Uh, basically limits three Hemis, four Chevy, twin V twelve. Yeah. Uh, also, the big wheel because we got the big Griffins over here. Three, three turbines, three, three Russian turbines. Yeah, turbines up to six thousand, some yeah. whatever horsepower. Yeah, we're just introducing the classes, and and then we got the the, the four ton, what we call the heavy modified, eighty eight hundred yeah. pounds, um, and strict. There's no overweight, and we are discussing whether we will still make it a little bit lighter or not. Everybody is preparing for that oh, okay. to get anywhere closer to the American weight limit whenever they will figure out what they actually want to run in reality and not on paper. So, yeah, this is basically the ETPC record nice classes. But most tractors run in the modified, also run in the heavy, correct? Every tractor is allowed to run two weight classes. Mm hmm. Uh, depending on where they are. You forgot the minis. I forgot the mini rods. Yeah, they're <laughs> basically the same as in America, yeah. and just that they are unlimited. So our V8 guys run 1871 blowers instead of 1471s. And we're having some with V12 engines on it. Yeah, which are getting rarer and rarer yeah. because the V12 engines are just too long, so they can't get enough weight on the nose. And on a, on a not so good track, they they are very competitive. If it's getting very grippy, they are just you, sky you, high. You can say this when you don't watch on the German mini classes. <laughs> yeah. So we're, there we are getting more and more V twelves again. Yeah, especially on on the as I said on the lower levels, on the lower on the let's say regional yeah. uh, events, they the the level for the V eight is not so high, and then you can still compete very well with the V twelve. Yeah. Okay. So that's a very very brief, quickly introduction of what we are doing here and. Uh, Basically answer the first question. What are the limits and rules? In, in most polls, they start the way that you presented them as well. They start with the garden stuff, and then they go into the hot farm, and then they go up to the you know, pro stock, super stock, and the modifieds, correct? Yeah, pretty much. The garden tractor polling basically is 
and I would not say its own association, but it's a kind of a club inside the club. So they come in their own show and many promoters just book the garden tractors to do something on the Saturday afternoon and Saturday morning, so. Saturday morning before the real crowd comes in just to give the little guys um, a chance to compete and learn. Yeah, that's the reason why they have them. Get yeah. new, get new folks in. Especially the six hundred, uh, the six hundred modifieds or the uh, one 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 thousand three hundred pound class. There, yes, it's pretty new. I think we're driving it to eight to ten years now. And uh, yeah, many of the garden polos with the lighter modified changed to the big class. Big class. Yeah, and we got the first guns trying to run into getting in, or trying to get into mini roads now. Yeah. Yeah, basically not so different to what they are doing in America. Just the problem that we have a border every, I don't know, depending on where you are, 300 to 600 <laughs> miles, and then the language changes and the culture changes and things are just done differently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you take a passport with you or is no, that required? No, that depends. Um, we got this thing, what's called the EU, and the EU basically means um, there's no borders except for the outer limits like hungary and, and mm -hmm. bulgaria yeah. and, and they have to protect the borders to russia and wherever turkey and within that eu region everybody can travel without a passport there's no border control nothing unless you go to switzerland they play their little island there they do have border controls but usually they just wave yeah. you through but it's, it's not that big of a deal they, they are the only thing they care at the swiss german border is uh, under the table money cash <laughs> so if you look rich rich or purposely not rich <laughs> they might stop you <laughs> check if you got any cash on you more than ten thousand. but other than that you can travel freely awesome <laughs> yeah the only place we really need to run a uh, passport is when we go to canada um otherwise you know we're free states here running all the way through and uh, you do have to have one. You don't have to one have one to get into Canada. You got to get one to get out of Canada. Because they right? won't let you out, or the Americans won't let you in. That's it. That's uh, basically right. Yeah, I don't. I don't know which one it is. I don't know if they won't let us back in, or, or the Canadians want to keep us. I just don't know. But one of them up there is going to stop you when you come back into the states. So. I think it's very. I think it's harder for Americans to come back into their own country. So. It is. Especially without so a passport, right then you're all of a sudden an illegal immigrant, and you know how they are, are treated. <laughs> you got to take the southern border then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot easier to get through Mexico than it is Canada. Yeah, swim the Rio Grande, and there you are. <laughs> that's 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 true. That's, that's basically that's that's a true statement. <laughs> <laughs> you should try to get from uh, Europe to America through an American airport. You sometimes spend four hours waiting in immigration, just waiting in line to be checked throughout to get your fingerprints, traked, uh, fingerprints taken, Irish scan and everything. And I don't know what they think. When, when you come from here and, you know, when, when I arrive in Europe, I take my passport, put it on an electronic scanner and open the door. In, there you are in and... I don't know. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got some more questions to I answer. See that. A lot of questions. Yeah. Question. Do they allow electronic fuel injection for the Oracle Superstock tractors in Europe? This was asked by Leslie Parker. Yes, they do. We have no limits on electronic fuel injection. Actually, I was, was sitting on the meeting where they were discussing that about, I don't know, eight, nine years ago. And the tech guy said, yeah, we are going to not allow any AFI, no electronic ignition. And I said, you are aware that we have several tractors running EFI, running completely electronic ignition for like a decade already? I said, you are going to outlaw tractors now? <laughs> oh, no, no. He didn't even have an idea what he was talking about. And there has been guys up in Finland running V12s on methanol <laughs> with uh, EFI since the, the mid-90s. So it never really was of any concern that this could be outlawed. And by the time they got the idea that this could be outlawed, it was too late. So, yeah. And it's not like EFI is super easy to install. Mm, no. But it's a lot cheaper to do it. I mean, a good EFI system is about the same price as a good data logger. And it has the data logger included. 
And once you got it all figured out, which is not easy, it just runs and it's safer and it's really, really safe on parts in the long run. It's just this big, we, steep learning curve. We did a uh, interview with Jeff Hurt last year and his fast lane tractor, the black super stock, uh, the black and green one, he was saying that he would put that back together, but he's just waiting for NTPA to come around on the EFI. They don't allow it. So, I mean, that, that tractor's, you can do some things with it, but you can't put EFI on it and compete. So he, yeah, that's well, I think oh, with the PPL, he can, though. So that's why it only it only pulled with the PPL. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I find that kind of funny because uh, if you look at what the street racing kids of today do, you know, the guys that are big on YouTube, and it's all EFI. That's what they... Well, I think there was a EFI in the Brent Payne uh, Galat Mini, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. And that, that was outlawed. So, uh, yeah, I mean, know, what do you do? They still... You have an idea... And, and, and they don't allow it, so you get rid of it. Yeah. I mean, it's not needed on a blown V8 because the technology there is, is figured out and it runs. And a blown engine is rather simple in the fuel curve because it's just linear. But anything turbocharged, uh, procharged, benefits from EFI, definitely. Absolutely. So, yeah, and for us, it has helped keep all the different engines alive. Yeah. Yeah. One more question from Marky Mark. Do you require a component chassis above a certain class? Uh, no, we don't require it. It may be allowed, but it's not required. What are your rules for shielding the turbo? Uh, basically, pretty much alike to what has now come in the US, where we have the cross in the front. Uh, cross in the back with a pin holding the wheel in. Um, then we have to have a cage that will catch the intake wheel in case it comes out. And everything is yeah, basically a bit... A lot of steel around, a lot more steel than you have in the States, but I see you got Kevlar blankets now, so it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, the, the Kevlar blankets yeah. around the uh, uh, compressor housing. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, it's the same, like you said, on, the, on both ends, they got the... Uh, the cross in there to keep it, you know, break it all up so it don't get out of there. Yeah. And we, so we, we, we got... had been running, we had been running bolts in our, in a, to keep in the exhaust side for years. Yeah. We had that had also for yet. years. That, that's been in there since I can remember what we, what we had to do. We had to move the cross right uh, to the exhaust of the um, exhaust housing. And that had to Correct. have, that cross also has to have a center bolt that basically is, a hair away from the uh, bolt that holds the uh, exhaust wheel so that if that exhaust wheel wants to come out, it runs against that bolt and can't come out. And the whole thing has to be held with a certain amount of thickness steel. So I remember when we did that for our tractor, I really had to roll the steel because you couldn't buy any tube that thick to hold the cross because we had that happen that, you know, the wheel came out, ran into the cross in the exhaust pipe and then just shredded the exhaust pipe and came out that way. Mm. And the same with the intake, okay. with the intake protection, we have that for, I don't know, 10, 12 years already that the intake, that the wheel can't get out because we had one incident where the flag and flagger uh, almost got hit by an intake wheel that shot straight out of the turbocharger into the sand pile, but, you know, passed right across the flag man. So that's when, yes. when they introduced that <laughs> a long time ago. Looked like a Wild West bullet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a spinning one. <laughs> do most owners drive their own tractors or do they have a separate <laughs> pilot or driver not really the thing is most teams here are really teams this is people who got together decided to build a tractor uh, often they share the uh, ownership of it and depending on the class they might put on the lightest guy or the one who works the most and it's not like there's any hired gun I mean, it's like with our tractor, I have to pay the bills. Uh, <laughs> my buddy who works the most on it is driving it. And that's the way it is in a lot of teams. Yeah. And if you've got a good rancher, that they put him on the driver's seat because that keeps them most motivated because they feel it's like their tractor. <laughs> well, you know, probably grandfather pulled it, then father pulled it, and now the kids are pulling it. Or, yeah, and even, even then, the cases too. even then in the Green Monster team where I come from, the drivers, yes, of course, the, 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 the son of the owner is still driving, but not always. There's three guys who work their butts off in the workshop, and they get to drive too. 
you know, and it's, yeah. Well, and we, we see that a little bit here with uh, Masterson Farms and, and several other ones, but a lot of it here is dad was driving, son starts driving. We see that with the guys out of Texas and with uh, uh, Phil Parrish and his son, Rhett, and, uh, you know, but now, like I said, Masterson Farms, the guy who helped them work on it, and and uh was with don and, and kevin the whole time he's actually driving now too and doing a fine job actually yeah but i think you've got a lot of what what we would call family teams or pulling mm -hmm. families actually where the family owns the tractor and that's that's kind of rare here it's not, not unheard of but uh, it's not unusual but we have some as i said mostly this, this is uh yeah it's like it's, it's like our team yeah there's some group of guys Who wants to have fun so yeah and we figured out or i figured out i can't do this alone i need somebody who can do the wrenching uh on the, on the rough shit uh somebody has to do the electrics uh i can do the fuel um somebody has to do the marketing obviously that's janice and <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's how we got together and, and and that's the only way we can do it i wouldn't be able to just do it all on my own even if with two people or so now Oh, no, it's team effort. Now, I have a question. Do yeah. you guys spend time together outside of the tractor, or is it always just right now? Um, <laughs> no, uh, sometimes we do. Yeah. When we go to I the mean, pole. What we do is we meet at least once a week in the workshop yeah. with everybody. Um, if there's a lot of things to do, then the guys who are needed will be there more often. Um, I try to have like one or two events in the year where we do something together as a team, be it going out for dinner together. I mean, really going out, not just getting food and yeah, or have a party together. And otherwise we, of course, that brings me to the next questions. Do you really have a band and party after each event? And then I would have to say not at everyone, but most of the Saturday events mm -hmm. we do. Yes. So for us as a team, uh, we would go to a pole, a drive hour, I don't know, two to five hours. Um, unload, get ready, pull, get everything back together. And then we as a group of what we are, five, six, seven, eight guys, we have been going to the pulling party together. And that's basically our weekend entertainment. Or we're going to other teams, sit down there and have yeah. a talk and a drink. Or uh, they're coming to us. Or that's, uh, yeah, you can say the, uh, I think in the US it's uh, probably the same, but uh, the pulling uh, group, the, the, the complete, the whole Pulling world in Germany is a big, is one big family, yep. and you can go to every other team, sit down, or you meet everyone at the next party, and yeah, yeah at the bar, at you the know, bar. That's, that's how you make connections at the beer bar. Uh, that, yeah. that works the same way in the states too. I figured that out already. And most events have a big. They just don't drink as much as we do. Both <laughs> mo most events have a big party tent, and uh, yeah, yeah. The, after the poll, most of the um, uh, spectators and some of the teams uh, will meet there, and yeah, yeah. And it's not only uh, that's why I see this question: Do you really have a party after the poll? Yes, they do have a party because that's a big part of their income. Because we are mostly as tractor pullers, we are out in the countryside, yeah, in little areas or in little villages where there's nothing else going on. And when the tractor pull comes to town, uh, it's often the place to go for the youth. And what they often do is they have a DJ or band playing in, in the evening after the poll. But to get to the party, they have to get pay admission to the poll. So oftentimes they just have to watch two or three hours of tractor pulling before they even get to get to listen to the music. So that's one way to force them into tractor pulling, <laughs> which works pretty right. well, by the way. But, but you, you know, one thing I've always been fascinated with you guys is y'all. The teams will sometimes have like not like a pre-party, you know, where it's catered, you know, and uh, you get if you're a, a uh, someone who sponsors the team, you get certain privileges to come in and spend some time with the team and you might get some merch out of it or something like that. But it, it'll have some catering or something to it, too, uh, to really bring in more sponsors. That's and the way I, how I sponsorship works. If you, if you ever watched the Formula One race, they're bringing two to three, four trucks that just do nothing else but hospitality. And sponsoring is not about the sticker on the tractor or the car. Sponsoring is about your sponsor bringing in special guests with, for a special treatment like customers or salespeople to make them feel special and to give their brand 
I'd say a good like African a VIP day. experience. Yeah, I give them yeah. a VIP experience so they feel like very special and they want to buy that product because they think, I don't know, Mercedes Benz treated me so well and they're so kind and I'm so special. Yeah, and if you come to the dealership the next time with that feeling, you are very well more likely to buy a Mercedes Benz than something else that never took you out. And that's the same thing in tractor pulling. And when you see those big uh, team hospitality areas like in Mad. Yeah. This is where the teams invite their sponsors for a weekend with the, their customers. You will have sponsors that bring like 80 people to a pole. Wow. And um, that can be so big as with MPM, the oil company, that they have a concert in the pits just for the people that came. And they have the uh, two, 200, 250 people there. Yep. With own own uh, food uh, food trucks with own with their own bar uh, yeah like Sasha said and own uh, yeah or ba band or DJ and own party and you only come uh, come inside that with the uh, right wristband if you are uh, part of the team or part of the sponsor yeah and the trick in this whole scenario is that you as a team provide the catering and afterwards you write a bill for food and drinks to the sponsor and the sponsor has no problem taken that out of tax money because it was just catering and customer support, not sponsoring. Nobody of your employees will be jealous about the company giving out money for, I don't know, <laughs> burning fuel. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's uh, how a lot of polls work here. That's the whole thing, how, how the first of tractor pull works. They got this big VIP area because sponsors bring the customers to the event. They get their special treatment, their own area their own bar, their own food, get the best places, and the team afterwards writes an invoice for catering and VIP. And that's... I, I think that's what... That's, I think that's what America needs more of. Uh, I mean, and I, I, I'm starting to transition into that myself. Uh, my tax guy told me, hey, listen, if you're, if you're feeding and taking care of these people with libations or whatever, that's all right off. Because you're entertaining your uh, your your sponsors and stuff, so correct. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we want to do that? You know? Yeah, and as I said, the way into sponsorship, and it's not made up for me. This is as you can see it in every big motor sports series. They they cater their sponsors and their guests. I mean, I've been invited, luckily, to two or one or two races. To actually, two together with my father because he was in a position where Mercedes-Benz was trying to sell engines to him and um, yeah first thing we got Formula One ticket so you go to a Formula One ticket Formula One race for free actually I once heard that at the big race tracks the big racing series at least half of the crowd there is not paying at the gate but getting tickets from the various sponsor companies involved and it's actually so bad that if you want to hire a racetrack they'll ask you how many tickets do you by up front, which, but the, which you as a promoter then have to load off at your sponsors. But they have a certain number of events. We have so many tractor pulls, you know, and the thing that I started watching recently after we started talking was that uh, whole driven uh, show, that F1 show that they put together to bring in more interest. Mm -hmm. uh, and that now they have record attendance. They went from not a lot of money as, as far as their valuation, and now they're like a billion dollar company again. Uh, yep, it's it's amazing what they've been able to do. I honestly think that's what we need here. We need big Netflix type cameras to follow some of these more interesting teams around that are doing something cool. So yeah. no, now the fun stuff comes. We had something here in Germany with our uh, uh, discovery. Yeah, with, with 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 the discovery, and uh, they had uh, they had done two seasons of uh, a show called Full Pull, one tractor versus uh, twenty tons, um, and they uh, yeah had uh, the Green Monster team, the El König team, and the Kaiser team in the, from the Superstock class, and they they got uh, yeah drove to three or four events with the team and uh, with their cameras and in the workshop with the cameras and they are uh, talking a little bit and it was yeah two seasons long or uh, four episodes each season and uh, yeah it was so uh, popular then that the fruit of tractable exploded yeah. from from uh, spectators the year after yeah and they and they didn't focus on the competition they no, they, they, they just showed behind the scenes stuff. They maybe showed yeah, right. that one tractor of the team that they were following was pulling, but 
the rest was just basically bullshitting in the workshop. Yeah. So we did something here in America. Uh, Brian Loans did it, and he did it with Motor Trend, where he had a couple of modifieds go down the track, pulling the, uh, the exact Bauer sled, weighted the exact same, and it was basically like a drag race. Mm-hmm. And then yep. they would have like a photo shoot, and then they would fly the drone, and then they would you know get them all cleaned up, and then they'd switch tracks and do it again. And you know I, the guys split a decent purse, but what they didn't know is that they were best friends. <laughs> so the guys are like, the discovery is like going to pay the winner, you know, a, a handsome salary. And then the winner, the loser didn't get anything. Well, the, the guys were best friends. So, Hey, we'll split it. But they, they said for the amount that they had to do, just spending around sitting and doing nothing and having people film them and stuff. He said it almost wasn't worth it. Yeah. But I see where the people are trying to do that, but I haven't, I haven't seen that show. You haven't seen that show because we're not on Motor Trend. It, it was a Motor Trend exclusive. It needs to be broadcast out to, to, to the world. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, that full Paul show even made it to Japan, I think. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. didn't know that's that. That's amazing. <laughs> not that they have any tractor pulling in Japan anymore. Yeah, but since then, uh, every time I say to uh, friends of mine, I go to a tractor pull and say, oh, you know Team Kaiser? Oh, you know the Green Monster team? Yeah, I know them. And then, uh, and yeah, I know Green Monster, and uh, I say, yeah, they are uh, they are one team from eighty teams in the whole German scene. So. Yeah, eighty <laughs> is even not enough. No, nah, not not yeah. enough. But Tiger, you're quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm just kind of picking up on waiting for. Uh, I'm sure there's probably plenty that I'll say. When when I get started, so yeah, you the guys thing is, just get I, I, I ran out of script, so yeah. <laughs> this was the questions we wanted to have asked, well, people wanted to ask, ask to answer, and uh, yeah, we got through that. And uh, thank you again for everybody yeah. on pull off yeah. and on our websites and, and Facebook for posing these questions uh, for the next show, I, Europeans. I, please, questions for those two guys. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we were looking when you were coming through, and, you know, we started on the garden tractors, and then we went to hot farms. Hot farm over here, I think, uh, we've got a a, a, hot, a farm class that runs like an eight-mile, four-mile-an-hour, eight-mile-an-hour, and then they've got an open class. You've got to make these other two classes before you can make the open class. And then we go to, I guess, the hot farm. Would that be like our... Uh, three thousand RPM mm. as well. Yeah, I would think. Yeah, the yeah. thing what we do and here is we we took the three thousand RPM, then we figured out we have different types of tractors, and the one type with six cylinder engine stops at kind of three sixty cubic inches, and the next one level up is too big. So what we did is we split the RPM. So we gave twenty seven hundred to those with four twenty seven and thirty two hundred for those with three sixty. So RPM okay. by engine size is the same, so they can run together. There's two different types. Of, basically, it's the American based tractors and the European based tractors. Right, but it works. <laughs> we have something. Works. We have something over here called a hot stock uh, that's running. I think 1400 RPM. But the the one of the re- the ways that we limit um, tractors over here is we'll have like a box turbo. You know, everybody's got to buy, buy the same turbo. Mm-hmm. Um, or sorry, injection pump. Uh, your turbo could be whatever. Ways. Yeah, but you, if if someone's running really good and you want their injection pump, you pay the five hundred dollars, you get their injection pump, and then they get a new one, and it's all sealed. You can't open it, you can't tune on it. Um, it's just plug and play, and so that's another way that we do we limit things without having to do the RPM. Um, but I would think anything over seventeen miles an hour in the states has got to have a roll cage. Um, and I would assume something like that. And you guys did say this that last week uh, we were talking a little bit. Uh, some of those tractors, their hot farm, they actually have the cabs, which have the rollover protection as well. So mm-hmm. yeah. they don't need the actual rollover. So there, there is no official sanctioned pulling taking place without a rollover protection. <laughs> it may look differently, but it's all certified and uh, okay with insurance and works. Correct. Yeah. As, yeah. as, when you mentioned our- box turbo, we, sorry, Trigger. When you mentioned box turbo, we do this restrictor plates in front of the turbochargers because that oh. prevents people from building expensive custom-made chargers. You because can't they just, can't get the air in. 
Yeah. yeah, no matter what you do, you can just take in what one size bigger turbo than what your restrictor is and still be pretty good on, on the way. We know that, for example, in one class, there's a truck turbo that was you can buy off the shelf. That's pretty much the best turbo you charter you can get for that class, and it's costing maybe twelve, thirteen hundred dollars, and it makes nine hundred and sixty horsepower or something. Cheap. That was the uh, intention. Tiger. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> Well, you know, and then you come in, like the factory ROPs are better, that's on your smaller classes. And then once they get into the 3,000 RPM class, then you're getting into um, your roll cages. You're getting into your uh, uh, built frames. The frames are not, you know, they're still all component or all cast, you know, factory cast. but And they're 466 with... Uh, 2.5 chargers i think or 2.6 mm -hmm. and those are getting into your roll cages 3000 rpms and then once we get from there then we start getting into our uh what would you call them will light limiteds mm -hmm. and, and then, then you're talking uh up there are they still running a pumps up there in the east coast uh, no they can run p pumps now okay so 466 p pumps three by four charger Four hundred eighty difference... cube yeah Okay, so we're 466 down here yet on them. And uh, you guys can run intercoolers out east where we run no intercoolers here in the Midwest. So being from Missouri area out here, I've got Illinois, uh, Indiana. You know, we go south, Tennessee and all that's all around us. So um, they're basically kind of the same there. And then they've got a light limited class, which is they run a, like a 360 with dual chargers, or you can run 410 with uh, a single charger. Most of that's diesels, I think. So, well, okay, so let's go ahead and just go with our classes. Like our pro, we've got many rods over here, same as you guys over there, like you said. Yeah. And then our pro stocks over here, 680 cubic inches, which would be, um, and then I think they've they've got to finally put a limit on the chargers, but it's like six and a half inch or something. It's something huge. So, Pro stock class over here is really big. People are really into that. The light pro stock class that we were just talking about, I think, is going to be a very good class that people be will be watching because it's got a smaller motor and and it makes it. I think there's going to be more color in it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's desperate. Uh, then we go to this super stock class. We still run quite a few diesels over here along with our alcohols. The diesels are starting to come on now where for many years the Connors brothers came out with the bad medicine tractor and really dominated the sport and alcohol dominated the sport. Now you're starting to see guys like uh, Triple Bypass and a few other ones that are coming up that are really uh, running right with the alcohol supers. They've got it figured out, and that is a neat class. When you start seeing the horsepower that these guys are putting down, and and the, how they've changed uh, the way they do it to put it on the ground. And I think that's a really neat deal for the alcohol and, and diesel guys that you can see the difference between two of them, how they can run one way and the other one run the other way and still be very competitive. And then we get into our modifieds. We've got a light modified class with, uh, with four motors, and then we can go to the big motors. Uh, most of the guys run just to add a couple motors to it and away they go and i'm sure that's about the same as you guys over there in your unlimited class they call it unlimited here as long as you can make weight you can put it on there mm -hmm. no no we, we do have limits in every class i think four mm -hmm. chemis uh for with 1471 so well, that's yeah that's we call that open it. or unlimited modified yeah the uh, dutch right the our, our light mod is two two blown two blown oh two blowns okay yeah, the Four thing. With, the thing was, we, as I said, we started out with a rule board from 19, from the nineteen seventies, and we had the weight classes in there. And those limits were actually introduced here when everybody and his brother started buying tractors from the states, hitting with uh, let's say five V eight blown V eights on single aircraft engine tractors, and uh, that pretty much killed the scene here instantly for a lot of teams. So. Yep, that's when they introduced the limits, and they haven't really changed that much since then. So, 
And as I said, we used to still run the old weights and they have now finally agreed to lower the heavy modified class. And yeah, but so far nobody has seen a reason to remove the limits because we all know what's going to happen. It will be your V8s only, your Hemis only, and then nobody will come watch this anymore. And we don't want that well, to happen. It's, it's bad. Speaking, it's bad the way it is already. We are so happy. We have to. Yep. Speak, speaking of that, though, what are they watching? What is your a fan's going to buy a ticket? And they're gonna. They got so much they they can see. You know, obviously you're talking about the bands, and you know, I know Tom Beatty. He runs a, a lot of music during the day and whatnot. But what are the fans like? Packed standing room only. What are they watching? What are they? What are they standing for? What are they watching the most? See, that's why we have a guy that's usually on the other side of the fence. He can answer that one. Uh, yeah, for my personal, I I'm a favorite to watch uh, the modified division uh, because um, yeah, the modified division is a big thing here in Europe, and um, for me, uh, why? Yeah, for, for for me, watching the modifieds this this uh, big loaded tractors uh, with many engines, the big engines. That's the thing I want to see. I don't see this. You can't see this every day. Like uh, you have the, the Drexler V8 engines, uh, the automotive V8 engines. Yeah, that's cool. But uh, yeah, the V8 engines, I personally like them. But uh, yeah, it's uh, for for the uh, usual fan, could kind of get boring. So we have some, yeah, we have these old, old uh, World War II engines like the Allisons or the Griffons. And they, they're, they uh, yeah, the not radials and radials, but, but they aren't uh, in the, in the, in the stock mode. They're getting tuned. And uh, like the Green Monster team is doing, uh, um, doing their own, own, own chargers and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> That's life. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so actually, it's the variety that yeah, the, var about. the variety of the engines and uh, yeah, getting them to that level that they are. Yeah, all, all the super stocks. You get uh, an original engine block with originally 150, 200 horsepower, and you build it up up to 5,000, 6,000 horsepower. Yeah, so. but what's the difference then from, from a European fan to an American fan? I didn't met an American fan yet, so I can't... So I you will know. have to find out when you go to Bowling Green. I have to find out. <laughs> yeah, see how they like the modifieds over there. <laughs> yeah, that's... Well, <laughs> many well days. over here you have, uh, what, 50 super farms or 52 wheel drives or 54 wheel drives, and a lot of fans, they'll they'll go get hamburgers or something to drink during the middle of that. They can't sit for that long. It's just, you know, but they also all, fans over here. They have a, I, I, I like to say there's a subsection of fan that likes both. They, they like the tractors and they like the trucks, but then there's this subsection of tra truck fans that can't stand tractors and tractor fans that can't stand trucks. There's a very small subsection that actually likes both. And so, you, we we might not even know unless you know you start the, the start of the show. Uh, some people might be showing up late. That's how you know how many people you have. You don't really know until someone rolls out the first vehicle. Yeah, we know? have we have uh, this uh, th those type of fans too. But we don't as since as we don't have so much truck classes, only a few two wheel drives and then the um, semi trucks. Um, Let's put it this way. There were enough tractor fans in the stands already to make sure that the trucks don't take over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but we have the same here with, uh, I say, the farm, the farm guys, the guys the who like the, the hot farms and the hot farms. And we have the, uh, the guys who like, uh, yeah, the modified the super stocks. So we are differencing between farm polos and tractor polos. Yeah, that's a big bit. difference here. Yeah. So you have uh, we have in Germany we have some uh, poles that only have uh, hooded tractors and maybe some the demonstration poles from from modifieds. So like our pole here in Volkmas, it's yeah. one of the biggest uh, poles we have here in Germany. Yeah, North Germany. Ho hooded, ho ho hooded with hood, yeah, with, with, with stock with tractors, yeah, stock of course, tractors. yeah. And uh, then you have uh, yeah, like Fuchtdorf. Um, they're more uh, focusing on the modified division or the tractor puller division. Yeah, they run all the modified class and they'll have one class with diesels and they have the Alka Supers. Yeah. But everything else is modified and unlimited. And that's by far the biggest pull here. Yeah. And that's where the people come from. And it's not the, the farm people or country people. It's actually city people going there. 
they like they like the modifieds, they like the variety, and it's all always when you bring something out like like last year we had this guy with a big forty eight cylinder Pratt and Whitney. Everybody wants to see that. That's what they come for. Even if it's not hyper competitive, that's something different they want to see. And it's the same in the US as saying that what what Bollinger's have now put together there with the blown uh, Ellisons. People want to see that. And imagine you have five, six, seven of those different types of tractors in a class. That's when you see the potential of the modifieds. That's what we are seeing here. We are not getting nearly as many people. We do get good crowds with, with, with stock tractors and, 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 and hot farms and pro stocks. Yes, but five, six thousand people, or more than that, getting difficult. The really big stuff, where you get like in the 15, 20 thousands, like Bernay, Fischdorf, Bahada, that's where they run the modifieds. Right. It's easier to put on a hot farm pole and get a crowd of, of 3,000 people instantly because then you work in the countryside and everybody's coming anyways and, and the, usually the gate admission but is pretty low. And, yeah, exactly. Or related to farmers. America does have a lot of, uh, I guess, they're rural poles, but they have a lot of city folk come to them. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's, you know, that's, that's where you see that it's something they can't relate to, like a modified engine. You know, that, that that's they can't imagine that. Like, are you kidding me? Thirteen thousand horsepower. You know, if it's something that they that they they they're not familiar with, that's what they're interested in. It's the stuff that's really completely off the wall. Yeah, um, you can tell them it's that's why modifieds do so well. And you know, God, I have it here with these jacked up trucks. I don't know why, but people love those trucks. I look, I gauge an audience by when do the iPhones come out and the <laughs> iPads, and then the whole crowd. That's what's hot. That's yeah. how you know you really got something when everybody has got their phone up recording it. Now you know that's hot. So yeah, um, I had that last weekend. We have this this Mercedes tractor, it's a four wheel drive tractor for equal sized wheels. Mm -hmm. It's not really a big tractor, but we had one guy here who turned that into a kind of a hot farm with the four equal sized wheels. That's what everybody wants to see. You put that thing on YouTube, and all of a sudden, you know, twenty thousand people a day are tuning in on that video with that tractor. Difference. Well, the good thing Something about you that don't is see every day. That, right. That's a meme. It's a meme over. It, like you type a, a GIF and you you pull up a tractor pull. That four wheel drive tractor that you're talking about is probably going to be a meme, and I've seen it. Yeah, Jaren has got. Yeah, our, our one of the, one of our guys here got really got became a meme on Facebook because yeah, that's that's uh, him with a hot farm. Yeah, that's having a cabin on, running uh, eight hundred horsepower hot farm with a cabin. And people go nuts. That's something. Where and we, we see it over here when I watch your guys' polls over there. And I watch these guys come out with these cab tractors. And I, I and, and until you explained it to me, you know, I'm sure there's other people over here who thought the same thing. Why are they running cabs instead of running, you know, roll cages and stuff? Well, you guys run the same fuels over there is what they got. They have gotten a lot of the associations that went to. Uh, running one fuel for the whole thing. Uh, actually, what they did here for um, diesel is that we have to run what they call HVO. Uh, that is, um, hmm. it's not biodiesel. It's something more modern. It's made out of um, biological waste, but they chemically take this totally apart and rebuild a diesel that's absolutely clear higher satin and very low NOx emissions and lower carbon and basically carbon neutral um, I gotcha it's okay. a little bit more interesting it's a little bit more expensive than regular diesel but since we run this we can put co2 neutral on our tractors and that's the first thing we did put that fuel in put big stickers on the tractor so every time mm -hmm. some of the tree huggers come complain we can tell them it's totally not the case. Yeah. We are running CO2 neutral. Exactly. You getting to here, to this so. place to complain, burn more CO2 than what we are doing with a tractor. So no go figure. Because they're usually not very smart when it comes to physics and stuff. They're usually quiet in that second. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, but anyhow, the fuel is good. Um, as I said, it's a little bit like ten percent or twenty percent more expensive than regular diesel, but in a competition vehicle, who cares? Um, yeah. 
Well, my kids just tell me, hey, dad, don't argue with Karen's. Just hide them off the channel. No one wants to see that. <laughs> so we hide as many people that start talking all that stuff. <sighs> but the, the problem that I've found is polling is such a global audience now. I'm getting comments and I have to translate them in every different language out there. Portuguese, uh, Vietnam, Vietnamese. I mean, it Chinese. Chinese people are watching these videos yes. and stuff. It's you have no idea. R lots of Rush, Russian, yep. and uh, it's just crazy. The Russians actually people... would have a good chance getting started if they would have started this thing lately and closed their borders. Yes. So, um, but we were getting it. They don't deserve tractor pulling. Ah, uh, yeah. The regular people is people are people. That's some different I know question. The, but they, they have plenty of farmers there too. Though. Yep, big farmers and a lot of German farmers actually that went there and bought land. <laughs> 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 Same with, with Ukraine. No, but uh, there's tractor pulling in the Baltics. There's not much. There's a bit in Poland. East Germany is getting good now. I mean, we're doing our part with the shows and the videos, but somebody has to translate them a rule book. For example, right, right. Before they start pulling uh -huh. without knowing that there is a rule book, that's when this usually the serious accidents happen. <laughs> well, we've got, I, you know, the, a lot of times you either we come over there or you guys come over here, and we usually find a way to make it work for our rules to to, you know, Gordyville has done that, uh, the Midwest Winter Nationals has done that, putting classes together from all shapes and forms yeah. of of tractor pulling that are different here different here and they change them up with weight and a little bit of other stuff and make it all work and i and i think that i think that across different genres of, of you know countries that we will start seeing that too that they'll be able to put us with other tractors and actually make everybody run competitive you know what i mean yeah the thing is and it'll be a little bit more a little more globalization. Yeah, the thing is, SFI is just isn't a thing here. Yeah, so I gotcha. what do you do with gotcha. SFI rules if they don't mean anything in this continent? It, right. Yeah, yeah, the steel flywheels and stuff. I mean, yeah, we do have the same. We have the same regulations. We just don't have the SFI stamp. It doesn't mean right. anything here. Right. If you tell an insurance here it's SFI certified, the insurance says, "What is that?" <laughs> So, uh, um, basically, right. the, the, the rules and safety rules are very similar. Of course, when something happens here, we have a board of engineers that are responsible for the safety. It's like Rich Ryan was with NTPA, and I know those people talk. But often, we introduced rules ahead of when America did it. Mm -hmm. For example, sled rules, all these box movement control systems, the, the crash boxes and everything. Our turbo protection, the way it looks now in the States, is the way it has been looking here for the last five, six years already. It's, there's little tiny differences. Uh, right. But they are negligible. This is, no, basically it's all, safety-wise, it's pretty much the same. We have to have this, we, our, our inspectors will allow an SFI clutch cap. But you are still able here to build your own clutch can, which has to be then uh, X-rated and um, has to be thicker than an SFI can, which also is one reason why we have a lot of people with those diesel engines and, and, and the big radials. Some of them can't get an SFI clutch can on those, and they have to build their own can. So what we give them is a building guideline where they can say, okay, you have to make this out of a seamless stoop, then weld the flanges and every weld has to be certified, for example, which usually means you can't weld it yourself, you have to get it built by some specialist. Uh, but then at the tech inspection, uh, you have to show the x-ray papers, for example. Right. As a, that would not fly under SFI. Is it unsafe? Probably not. In fact, when you have those pressed steel cans, like they had in the past, they, 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 I've seen clutches come out of SFI cans before. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen clutch gears just pop out of uh, vehicles and roll right up the track, you know, right into the stands. Mm -hmm. It happens. The, the uh, NTPA rule about the blankets for stock tractors, 
it's pretty much a rule for international and John Deere tractors. There are some tractors where it, you can't fit it that way. <laughs> so there had to be rule changes made there to make it even possible to get a blanket around like a fan tractor, for example. But as I said, there, there's a bunch of engineers here who are doing work safety as their profession too, who then have to look into that. It would probably be nice to have something like a worldwide governing body for tech and safety and tractor pulling rules. Like starting right. to make everything metric. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be the end of it. <laughs> Let the world vote. <laughs> I guarantee you, you do that, someone's going to come out with another type of measuring system. Uh, the English somehow did that. Jesus Christ. If you take a Rolls Royce engine apart, you will find out what kind of weird stuff you can do with threats and uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> You know, it's one, one thing to get into the American way of building things, and then there's another way, and that's getting into the English way of building things. <laughs> of course, they invented it all, and uh, okay. <laughs> do, we, do we want to take the time to get into this uh, boar going super stock? Yeah, I think. So the reason why we actually came together here is because we wanted to have a little outlook on the European scene. Yeah. We got a little sidetracked, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, good, good, good talking. Yeah, I mean, it's just getting the first show going. We will. It'll be more. We have to get to know each other a little bit. But anyways, um, so what's the things we have to look out for in Europe this season? Yeah, Boer's going superstar. Yeah, so Barry Boer and his father. You know, the, most of them, most of the American fans should know them that they're constructing min, mini rod chassis and they're also driving a mini rod with yeah, the national teams to, to, together. Yeah, they got the Bobcat team. The Bobcat and they, run, they run the Bobcat mini. One, 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 one Bobcat mini in the States, and they used to run two over yeah. here and two modifieds. And, and the they, US uh, version of it just won the Mac Window Nationals. Exactly. So these guys sold their light modified and bought and went to Brand Payne and bought something Gellert like from over there and they are going to focus on the super stocks here now uh this is the thing to watch out for. i think they're gonna stay on the dutch circuit for the first year yeah, before they go euro cup and they're not get, uh, competing in euro cup this year no, just getting getting all dialed in and then they go for but if you cup. run in the dutch division on top you run on the euro cup on yeah uh, on, on top for sure the dutch circuit is the strongest here definitely yeah. you have uh, mr van der waal on top yeah, we had one guy here, or we have one guy here who has been pretty powerful with his super stock creations. He built everything on his own. He's got a big CNC shop. And every time we had an American super stock come to Ahoy the last couple of years, I think he put it on them. Uh, last time I can remember, I was there uh, with the Gallops in 2017, Brent Payne and, uh, and, his, and his team. And uh, he drove with both Gallop tractors there, and Van der Waal, uh, got him on a yeah like 230 250 feet long track and he got them 30 feet behind him mm. so wow yeah and so that was awesome and they and the tractors from uh pain were, were running good yeah i'm not sure what's what the so it would be interesting what what the uh how the competition level has changed in the states we did we don't have much of a comparison anymore since yeah. the hoys is gone and uh yeah, another thing in the past was was uh, the Europeans started to run the meters tires earlier, so that right. advantage is gone. Now that that wasn't easy twenty feet on any Firestone. Uh, Ida figured that out when he came here, and somehow got what third, fourth. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what else? We got a new green fighter coming. Yeah, as probably many people have seen. New triple Allisons. Mm -hmm. So the Green Monster team is building a new. Let's say call it an unlimited. It will be able to yeah. make the weight an unlimited, no question. With three Allisons with a big uh, homemade superchargers on them. Called Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Yeah, everybody calls their charges Frankenstein if they're something <laughs> different. Uh, so that tractor is about to be, it's close to be finished. Uh, yeah. They got like three more weeks to go. Four, four weeks. Uh, we'll be going to the workshop uh, the week before the poll. So third weekend of April or fourth, something like that. Yeah. Uh, visit the shop um make a little video out of that one so that will be quite interesting to see because that's i think the last stand trying to run unlimited with allison's 
But it will be German. V uh, German spoken. Yeah, Google, YouTube does have subtitles and translation. Yeah. You can always turn on the <laughs> subtitles and hit translation. That, that somehow, right. <laughs> twenty percent of that makes no sense, but you can basically get the idea. And and will be very interesting. So the tractor. We saw already some photos and. Uh, really yeah. Do we have any here? Uh, I don't have any on our floating finish album. You don't. No. We had last week. Why did you delete them? Because we always delete our photos. That's last true. <laughs> Anyhow, so the yeah. old one was eighteen thousand horsepower. What are they expecting on this new one? <sighs> there, I, I guess it'll be over ten. And over when, you, 10. when you when you talk to the, the to the guys who run uh, the V eights, they will say they'll make them thirty two, thirty four hundred with a V eight. Because yes, it can do more, but it will not do that in a setup for tractor pulling. And I mean, they've been very competitive with the old tractor, with the yeah. standard blowers, which definitely not don't make much more than twenty six, twenty seven hundred. And he was the first one to get the meters tires running in the end. Yeah, the I know, but there's still the problem with the tractor now was that that it can't couldn't keep the nose down. So that's the reason why they. Yeah, Neil. No, no, no. But I want to try to figure he he could keep up with the uh, with the big hemi tractors. Uh, you saw in 2018 he was European champion and the Euro Cup champion. Yeah, and if you look at the light mod, they're, they're running twin hemis versus twin Ellisons, yeah. and that's this close. And I can tell you the engines on the light mod are not on the latest uh, development stage. There's uh, quite a bit more in them. So that's going to be interesting. And the first poll will be Fischdorf. Yeah. Which, and by the way, you can watch on the live stream on WWPTV Plus and on our channel here. Yeah. Oh, no. And for Americans, it's probably easier to watch the uh, WWPTV Plus show. Uh, it's going to be two days. Um, yeah, what else? Light modifieds. Fischdorf will also be light modified. The first Euro Cup round for yeah. those guys. And it's the first time since 2007, I think, uh, since the class was invited in the Euro Cup. We don't have any twin hemi on it no that's gonna be how many tractors we got this year 14? We got 14 14 tractors and 14 different engine combinations yeah so we have uh, yeah the twin allisons that you talk about from green monster we have one triple chevy in yep. it and yeah and then the only v8 is a v8 uh, truck engine yeah. from the metal boy from denmark with turbochargers yeah. Uh, yeah we have uh, other We've got everything we got twin v12 with roots blowers we yeah. got uh Rover Meteor V12s with Allison superchargers with we different got wheels. We got Rolls Royce Griffin, Griffins, Ray, got Ray Continental Gilles, Tank Engines, Continental Turbochargers, everything. Yeah. So this is what everybody's looking forward to at the moment. Light modifiers. Who would have thought of that? Yeah, that's uh, one of the. Yeah. The question is, why are the Hamies not in the class? Because most of them moved up. <laughs> yeah, we have. Uh... Yeah, there was a lot of guys that came out of mini rod, you know, and and decided to go modified, or some others that came out of the bigger classes and went light modified because the light modified was introduced to the Euro Cup and they were like the way like why, why should we run the big stuff if we get in front in front of the same crowd with a smaller tractor but those teams we have two dead twin twin hemi tractors left in Europe uh, they're both in Netherlands but they had all only driving their own Dutch competition yeah so part, no, one part of that story is because they're pretty religious and they don't pull Sundays and the Euro Cup competition oh. and the Euro Cup competition is all over Europe and you have to pull you have to Sundays. pull Sundays if you're running the points so the rest of Europe is not catering to your little religious area in the Netherlands just so uh, yeah they get their way so yeah yeah and the other two were this wicked screamer from the Boers like we said they say they sold the tractor because of the super stock and we got it's the, coming back with Chevy's from England yeah it's coming mm -hmm. next in about next year and we have the uh, Uncle Duck tractor uh, with a twin Hemi, but they moved up into the modifieds with triple Hemi. Yep. Sounds like it's a good combination of of stuff that, you know, and, and you know just as well as I do, we talked about this with Louisville, that your guys, when they, most of our stuff is Hemi's. But it makes sense. You can buy everything. And if you have to run, like, I don't know, 20 poles a year, and then in a time frame between June and what do you do, August, September? And you're on two or two, three events a week at times, and you break something, you need to be able to fix it. Mm -hmm. We don't run as many Euro Cup holes as you run Grand Nationals. So there's more time Correct. for the teams to, to prepare. Yeah, also the availability oh. of parts is different. 
if you run a Hemi here, it still means you're running an import. You have to get everything across right. from the ocean. But they, they signed a contingency that said that they were going to keep the spares and all that stuff to come out and, and put on a show every time out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Most of the guys here carry extra engines with them anyway, so they have, you know, there'll be two engines. If they're running four or five engines, they'll have two extras for sure. Mm -hmm. the, do you guys run over there? Where does your, uh, say, 30-inch tire start, you know, your the wider tire? from your 24.5 like your pro stocks are are the 24.5 and when did the 30 start like super stock and modified lot light modified you mean when they started running the white tires no what uh, what class do they, they same as in the states same, same as in the us uh okay. 7700 okay. actually <laughs> no our hot farms can run any size tire they want <laughs> really yep yeah, we have some hot farms with uh, the big tires. Wait, let me let me get a picture. I had one. I had one. I had one. Uh, where is he? Where is he? There. There is no limit on. I see some of your hot. Yeah, that. But that's meters. Oh, that's, that's a twenty-four by five. The question is, see the guys with the here. There, that's one. That's a forty-two inch. This one here. Forty-two inch Michelin. Oh yeah. Yep. Seven ten white which is um, I, oh. I don't know i just i thought he was he was wearing the big tires but then, yeah then i don't have a picture of some tractor with the big ones yeah it's the hot farms running the biggest tires here because what the heck if you can get a tire from the junkyard or from from an old tractor from the graveyard <laughs> from the tractor <laughs> graveyard for 500 bucks why should you limit the guy to run those tires in the end, if they make horsepower, then it's still going to be a special made custom or custom made tire. But, right. yeah, see, like, this is how, how our hot farms run. And they run, don't run this because they can't afford anything else. <laughs> they want those tires. <laughs> Same so here. So we've, yeah. uh, we've talked about the new green fighter. We've talked about the light limit uh, modifieds. What else do we want to talk about for European polling 2024? What else are questions do you have? This is a show for mostly American people, so it should be you who has to have the questions. Next week it's us to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, so you've okay, you, uh, you you're talking about super stock and modifieds and all that stuff. What are the other classes doing? Are the two wheel drives growing? Are the semis growing? Or, or is it just your tractor classes growing? Uh, the two wheel drives are. Were once bigger, then they get smaller. The the the, uh, the two wheel drives only had run in uh, the Netherlands, in Sweden, and in France. But yeah, the and Swedish two wheel, I think the Swedish two wheel drive is only one tractor left. The 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 France uh, people, French. the French people are getting yeah some kind the of French are kind of running the old parts of the Dutch guys. Yeah. So, uh, and the French two wheel drive trucks are more like a show than a competition. Yeah. Or at least they used to be mm. that way. Uh, the so only they're always happy if they get a running Chevy V8 with 871 blower that doesn't explode every third run. So, uh, <laughs> they could put on a show for the crowd there. And in the ne Netherlands, you have, uh, yeah, the guys with the big hemis, but yeah, they are getting smaller and smaller over the years. Less, yeah. Now, now they they had last year, one team came back from, uh, from a little break. And uh, this year they have a new name on the on, on the starting list, but don't know anything about this tractor. Uh, two wheel drives are not doing too well here. They're, no. they're not dying, but they're not really growing either. Trucks is a very specific thing for the Netherlands and the Finnish and the fin in Finland. The Danish do a little bit, but not on but on, not, on that level. No, what would have, would have to happen is Germany getting trucks going, but we have too many tractors for what. <laughs> For our yeah. association, the way that it's run at the moment, <laughs> anyway, so I uh, don't see that happening too soon. What about what about diesel pickups? Do you guys run diesel no. pickups over there? Nothing, nothing like that. Nope, no, we don't have okay. any four, four, four by four trucks or anything like that here. Yeah. We, we could, don't yeah, have no four by four trucks either. Yeah, they don't have a truck culture like we have a truck all. culture. It, it, if you not, run a pickup truck, you're, 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 uh, yeah. Not even a farmer. How we, the most people he, around here, there are some pickup trucks, but yeah. they're usually run by, by people who run nurseries or something. They have to deliver little loads of plants or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
you don't want to be involved with those guys if you want to be cool. So. <laughs> Yeah, they're not doing right. donuts. They're they're doing deliveries with their pickup right. trucks. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I think the division that grows the most here in Germany is uh, uh, the limited modified tractors and uh, um, farm tractors. Hot farms. The yeah. the uh, level two and level three. Yeah, uh, I think uh, all level hot farms. Yep. They of they are growing fast. Kind of yeah. I'd we just uh, got uh, on our, our our latest show. We are talking about the German Championships, and on the um, seventy seven hundred pound class uh, on level two, we have twenty five tractors. Uh, we're running German Championships, and that's uh, so, yeah, suddenly the biggest class we have here. You start getting twenty five in a class, you're getting you know. There's people building for that class. You know, somebody gets out there, looks at it, and goes, "You know what? I can build." I, we got an old tractor sitting around. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. You know, the only way to get so, on new teams is make people in the stands think, "Hey, I can do this." That's exactly right. Yep. Yep. I can do this. I agree. I think that's why we got to do more of inter uh, communication with the the teams that are approachable enough that people could see themselves as them one day. And say, but some of the classes over there, it'd probably be just ridiculous to say, I want to build to an unlimited modified, okay? But a hot farm, it doesn't have to be like one of those built hot farms. It could be, you know, something that, you know, their family had on the farm or That's, something like we, that. that. I don't think it, we have you know, many built hot farms here. Anything under 2,000 horsepower is not built by somebody else. They might build it by a camshaft. They might buy a fuel pump or a turbocharger. But... The rest right. of it, yeah, and the clutch maybe, or, and maybe get the gears done, but they will basically build their own tractor. But we made pretty mm -hmm. much sure to tell them how to do it. When we started this hot farm stuff, I made a long list of things, what to get where, how to do this, how to do that, who can do it, um, and made it pretty accessible to, let's say, get up to five, 600 horsepower to get your feet with it and get started. And it kind of went from there, and you can still... Yeah, once the knowledge is out and now everybody knows how to do it. And the the, the spirit here, in, in especially in the hot farm classes in Germany, is they want to help each other. They want to grow. So there's not much, you know, competition or rivalry. They're, everybody's happy if somebody else wins. They help each other out. I mean, all pullers do that. But it's really to the point where they um, even tell their competition how to do it. And if something's not running, they go over there and say, hey, you have to fix this, 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 this. I have this part. Hey, let's come do this. Come to my place. We have a dyno. Uh, and try to encourage people to run. I've seen yeah, this. That's good. I've seen the complete opposite in other parts of the world where they just try to tell everybody, hey, this is how much I paid for the tractor and I don't think you can afford this. And then wonder why they're the only one in the class. <laughs> well, I think what you're starting to see over there is the same as over here is a family growing that hot farm deal. You're talking about the pro stock guys over here and supers and everybody, you know, all the way from the small all the way up. If you're not running and they've got it, I've seen guys run their tractor, the guy blow a turbo and won the class or was in the pull off. And one of the other guys took his turbo off of his pro stock, yeah. give it to him to put on it in between classes, yeah. in between the first and the last of the class and actually <laughs> go to pulling. And I think that it's one of those deals is that's what you're saying over there, too. You're starting to see a family grow together to help each other get so that everybody can run. Yeah, I have a fun story uh, that you're talking about. Uh getting parts from other tractors um, one time the archer family uh, dave archer and were here with the uh, black widow tractor in aoi and they uh yeah crashed uh, they blew the rear end yeah they, 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 they were the trying to run the heavy modified class yeah. but it <laughs> didn't work out <laughs> they, they blew the rear end and uh, in the break uh, between the two sessions they are uh, getting the rear end from uh, modified tractor here from, from the uh, bandit, bandit yeah bandit modified tractor from europe they changed the whole uh, uh, rear axle and so they could drive into the second session again yeah we did something similar in gordyville a couple of years ago where uh, jason forrester who drives the papa smurf was pulling Vern Zerbe's tractor, the 00Z and Dr. LZ, 
and both of them scorched some pistons in them and we took two motors apart and we took i think one of them had two good pistons on it left and we took those and put it in the other one and five hours later we had that thing running in the finals and it was kind of done just to make a point to another puller who thought he was automatically going to be in because these two tractors blew blew uh scorched some pistons Okay, yeah. I mean, and, uh, well, here we are. We're we're putting these two tractors. We're putting these two motors uh, together. I mean, uh, what 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 adds a little bit of a spicy here is the fact that we are still running between different countries. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> When you get exactly. to the point, <laughs> imagine an American polo has to borrow parts of a Mexican polo. How that'll work out? <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine that. Imagine it was all four guys working on two internationals. I mean, yeah. that's it, it's it's it was not ideal, but you're going to do it because you you came to pole, you yep. know, and that's that's the whole point. Once you get that mentality, or the these new fans who want to become pullers get mm-hmm. that mentality, yeah, they they're going to get bit by that bug too. And when they do, it's it's going to be their most expensive uh, life decision ever because they're going to want to put everything into it. That they possibly can. Yeah, how much does this pulling sport cost? All you have. <laughs> it, it, it costs you everything. <laughs> Whatever you have, it, it's going to take everything that you have. Yeah. Well, no, not that. No, no. If you have been doing it long enough, well, you know where to where to stop. <laughs> I, I know that. You can find a deal. You can find a deal, but the, the that's that's what a lot of pullers over here say. Pulling the cost hasn't changed in a hundred years. It takes everything you got, either your time, your talent, or. Um, you know your, your friendships money. yeah, yeah. Dep- money yeah i always keep saying it depends on your ego <laughs> <laughs> how competitive are you yeah why are you doing this awesome <laughs> why are you doing this do you want to win or not you know what i want to impress a bunch of strangers <laughs> i spent 10 years at the very top level with you know being away from home every friday to monday morning and being tired at work and uh And that's why I stopped for a while also, b- besides moving away uh, to a different location. And uh, But I miss the, the, the being around those people and having something to tinker with, which is why I built a tractor. But I don't have any ambition with that thing to win. I wanted to run. I made my some very crazy decisions on how to run the fuel and how to run the turbos and everything. And my ambition is to get this thing to work. If it runs okay, if we win, it's okay. <laughs> doesn't matter. If it runs okay, doesn't break, and I then I don't care if I'm second or tenth or win. Doesn't matter. Right. So that's why I'm doing it. So well, I'm, I'm, I will not go and chase chase the you, first player spot spot. Not a, no. If you can drive it onto the trailer, that's a win in a lot of people's books over here. That's what we say. Poor us. We're not allowed to drive in the pits and onto the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> for insurance reasons. <laughs> If you turn it off on your own, you're fine. Yep. That's the way There it goes. Go. Well. I think we have it, huh? Well, that's... I guess we have a start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We've been doing what now? Like over an hour so yeah we're good <laughs> way over an hour way over an hour. yeah <laughs> I'll, i'll try to get something done with it well thanks guys yeah, yeah. uh my all right. people out there Before hope we leave i just want to say next week i will have pay-per-view on uh jacksonville mm-hmm. the 13th and the 14th in oh, nice. uh, jacksonville oh, cool. yeah on WWE. 10 bucks because they're going to be playing music they'll be playing disco music in the background but we'll have hot farm pro uh Hot Farm, Super Farm, uh, blown two-wheel drive minis, modifieds, and some pro stock four by fours, and some pro stock two-wheel drives. Basically, yeah. so it's it's it. The price is a little bit lower than it's been in the past. Ten bucks, I think. So we'll yeah, check it out. A w- lot of people don't w- realize we have to do this pay per view because when we are using a platform uh, other than YouTube, it costs money to do that. So uh, we are not going to pay and work for you to watch. It's just, uh, we're already working for. Pretty little money and um, peanuts, yeah. Peanuts, and, yeah. <laughs> uh, we do it because we love the sport, and like we just sit here making asses out of ourselves. So um, <laughs> 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 now we got this going. I think it was, yeah. it was a bit rough at the beginning, but I think we're getting it going. Well, thanks people for tuning in. Yeah. Um, we're gonna have a show soon again, then with a bit more focus. 
from the European side towards the American side, where people, I will try to collect questions from the Europeans. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as I said, yep. thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in here. Will, Tiger, I got one there, one there. <laughs> 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 and I hope to see you Sasa. soon. Yeah, Tiger, thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay. See you next time. All right, guys. We'll see you all later, okay? Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.